Hey boys and girls, today we're going to be reading chapter 8, Dropouts. Hmm, I wonder if some people are going to drop out of the science fair. Then it was Christmas vacation. That's always been my favorite time of year. Where we live, there's almost always snow at Christmas. And there's nothing better than snow plus no school. But this vacation was different. On Christmas morning, I was waiting at the top of the stairs with Abby. Was I thinking about all the presents under the tree in the living room? No, I was thinking about magnets. And after the big Christmas dinner and after Graham and Grandpa went home, did I play with my new Lego motor kit for the rest of the afternoon? No, I dug around in Dad's workshop. I was looking for wire and pieces of iron, and it was like that all week. Every day I did some work on my project. I read my books, I made some drawings, I used the scientific method, and I wrote things down. One day I had Mom take me to the hardware store. We bought four big batteries. Each one was as heavy as a jar of peanut butter, a full one. That's a huge battery. We bought two of the biggest nails I'd ever seen. They were about a foot long and thicker than my pointer finger. So a foot long would be 12 inches. That would be the size of a ruler. And then we went to Radio Shack and bought two big spools of thin wire. That was what my vacation was like. When I wasn't working on my project, I was thinking about it. I mean, I didn't work on it the whole week, not every second. One day I went sledding with Willie. We had a great time and we didn't talk about our projects, not even once. And I did build this amazing Lego machine, which Abby wrecked. So even a big science fair can't ruin Christmas, but it came very close. The week after vacation, Kevin went from being a know-it-all to a show-it-all. You know how I worked to keep my project a secret? Kevin worked even harder to show and tell everyone about his all the time. If kids walked past Kevin's table, he would start telling all about his aunts. And if they tried to walk away, he'd say, and look what else I found out. Kevin worked on a big poster at the table by the windows. He just left it lying there for everyone to see. The poster was great. It really was. And it wasn't even half done. In the gym on Tuesday, Kevin lay down on the floor by the wall. He started looking at some ants with a magnifying glass. They were in a long line marching toward the door of the cafeteria. And when... When kids came around, he told about how he had found out the way ants smell things and how their eyes and jaws work. And Kevin brought these amazing pictures. He took them with a digital camera. He printed them out on a color printer during library period. He showed them to everybody. On Thursday, I was waiting in line with Willie to buy ice cream sandwiches. I said, so did you start your project over vacation? He said, yeah, I got some done but I'm not gonna be in the science fair. And four other kids in my class, they're quitting too. I didn't understand. I said, what do you mean? Willie peeled back the paper and bit off a corner of his ice cream sandwich. He said, I quit the science fair. It's too much trouble. Besides, everybody knows Kevin is gonna win. I was still confused and Willie could tell. He said, you've seen Kevin's stuff about ants, right? It's really good. And so is Carl Burton's stuff. In my class, his project is about simple machines, but I think Kevin's is better. And then I got it. I got what Kevin had been doing all week. I said, don't you see, Willie? Don't you see? That's what Kevin wants. He's been showing off his science project so kids like us will drop out. He set a trap and you walked into it. Willie shrugged. Yeah, I guess so. But what's the point? It wasn't any fun to work on. Willie kept squeezing the ice cream out of the middle of his ice cream sandwich so he could lick it off. I said, but what about Blintinium 12 and a whole year of free internet? Don't you want to win that? Willie shrugged again. I mean, sure, that would be great, but I don't really need a new computer. And who wants to just try to beat Kevin all the time? That made me think, and I got madder and madder at Kevin. He didn't really break any rules, but what he was doing didn't seem fair. And I got mad at Marsha because she was as bad as Kevin. All week long, she had been telling everyone about her project, too. She was going to prove that she could fool, gra fool grass seeds into growing upside down. And then I got mad at Mr. Lenny Cordo. 
I thought it was all his fault that everyone was so upset about the science fair. Everyone was going nuts about his new computers. And then I got mad at Miss Cart and Miss Snaven and all the other grown-ups. They were the ones who let Wonky's computer store talk them into this whole idea. And when I ran out of other people to get mad at, I got mad at myself. I had turned myself into know-it-all. I had gotten as mean as Kevin and as sneaky as Marsha. I had practically ruined Christmas so I could win the big prize. But worst of all, back when Willie wanted to be my partner, what did I do? I sent him off on his own. I threw him into the shark tank with Kevin and into the snake pit with Marsha. Willie and I could have had fun working on a project together. All Thursday afternoon, my thoughts went around and around. I got sick of the whole mess, and I decided there was only one thing to do. I was going to forget about Kevin and Marcia. I was going to forget about Miss Carp and Miss Naven. I was going to forget about Mr. Lenny Cordo and his Blentinium 12 computer. I was going to quit the stupid science fair, too, just like my best friend, Willie. I wonder if he'll actually quit. He's come a long way, and he's actually pretty interested in the science fair. It sounds like he just kind of hit a snag. He got fed up and frustrated with it. That happens to a lot of us. We get frustrated with something, and we want to quit. But if we keep trying and keep doing it, it turns out really good. He's also starting to regret how he was acting. So I can't wait to find out what happens in the next chapters. So today for... This chapter, you're going to go to your work slides, and you're going to do slide 21, Characters with a Cause. I'm going to zoom in some. Where is Zoom? There it is. Okay, so cause is what happens, and why it happens is cause and effect. So why something happened is the cause. So Jake is obsessed with winning the science fair. What happens because of the cause is the effect. Jake spends little time playing with his toys during Christmas vacation. In chapter eight, Kevin's actions or a cause lead many students to quit the science fair. That's the effect. On the lines below, describe what Kevin does to cause the students to quit. So you need to give four examples of what Kevin did that would cause the students to quit. So look back in your book. What was Kevin doing that would cause them to quit? He would say he laid down on the wall. He started looking at some ants with a magnifying glass. He said about how ants smell things. Um. Ke- uh, he, Kevin, everybody said Kevin was going to win. Uh, he brought in photographs. He had a big poster. So there's a lot of stuff Kevin did. So you come up with the four things Kevin did and make sure you write in a complete sentence. Then the second part, Jake blames many characters for the cause of his anger. List the characters that he blames on the lines below. So he blames himself, and what are five other characters he blames? Why was he so mad? Who was he mad at? And type their names here. I hope y'all have a great day. I miss y'all.